come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming at you every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for a total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. Because all that stuff helps us get found by Ring other... That bell. That's right. Smash that bell. <laughs> oh, no. Hammer that bell. Smash I don't know. You got to come up with a... Yeah. Uh, um, be easy with the bell. <laughs> it's a sensitive bell. <laughs> all right. You can leave us a review also wherever you found us. Uh, that also helps us get uh, moving up through the algorithms because we're, our goal is to take over the podcasting universe uh, or the galaxy or the world's unknown. Or, yeah. Everything. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. World's to unknown. infinity. I like it. Yeah. Uh, these are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin, and tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. Mm. Holly, what did we watch tonight? Where did we go? Tonight we went to the Dark City. We did. We did. From the year. 1998. Directed by... Alex Proyas. Who dat? Um, you would know him from The Crow. Uh, like directed The Crow? Directed The Crow, okay. directed Gods of Egypt. Oh. Uh, and I Stay robot. tuned for that. We yeah. will do, we uh, will do Gods of Egypt eventually. Oh, oh I mean. These all seem very dark, except Gods of Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like the opposite. Movie. It's a very bright it's movie. It's like a bright movie. It's salty yeah. with sunlight. Yeah. yeah. He also came up with the story for this movie, but he did not write the script. Is this uh, an okay. original story slash script it is based an origi- on anything? It's an original story uh, based on a dream that he kept having this reoccurring dream. Um, but the screenplay is by Lem Dobbs and David Goyer. No, oh, nice. Do you recognize those names? I know D- David, David Goyer, Goyer, yeah. Lem has written everything. <laughs> Lem Dobbs, you might remember from Gotti. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> it all comes back to Gotti. Yeah. I saw that today and I just got butterflies. I was so <laughs> no. excited. Of course, I mean, <laughs> of course, someone named Lem Dobbs yeah. would work on Gotti. That Bro tracks. Gotti. Yeah. <laughs> well, David Goyer, I know, like, he's, uh, he's, oh, he's like the superhero guy. Yeah. He wrote oh, the Dark Knight, right? He wrote, yeah. Yeah. he wrote on all three Dark Knight movies of the trilogy he wrote on men of steel um he's uh, recently he's written on the sandman which mm-hmm. i haven't watched oh. but people um, are loving it the new hellraiser right so he's still working um he did all the blade movies that was like his big i think he did yeah yeah prior to he did the crow movies too but mm-hmm. blade well, he like, did crow was, too right yes yeah. i'm sorry he did the second one the, the terrible one but i mean he did <laughs> he did well there's been yeah, like five more somewhere. since then so but he did the blade uh, the, yeah. the, the trilogy there. He um, became a director uh, also, like uh, in the, the Unborn or whatever, the Gary Oldman, the yeah. Dybbuk uh, movie. Yeah. And one called The Invisible that I remember seeing trailers for all the time. It was like this, I think a kid. Is that the like, kid who, uh, the school kid? Yeah, yeah, friends, yeah. Oh, okay. I've seen that movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember how it ended. I believe that was a David Goyer. Yeah. Directed, wrote, wrote and directed. Was that one of his like first ones? Because that was like a big deal. Like David Goyer's directing. Might have been. I think. I just remember they advertised it all over the place. Yeah, it's the same kid who played in the Dragon Ball Z movie. Oh, sure. sure. As, like, as, yeah. the, as the lead. Like, I can't be part of that conversation. Yeah, yeah, I, have, yeah, I, I got nothing. nothing. <laughs> yeah, I nothing. Yeah. Um. And David Goyer, he got his start with uh, Van Damme, right? With Kick Death Boxer Warrant. T- and, and Kickboxer, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nice. So he worked his way up, and now he's, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's doing all that. Well, it's always like comic book ish yeah. kind mm-hmm. of projects, which I suppose makes him perfect for this movie right. in, just, in a lot of ways. I just like putting together little tidbits like, yeah, we're going to watch a movie from the minds who came up with Gotti and <laughs> Gods of Egypt. <laughs> right. And the Dark Knight. And the Dark Knight. <laughs> <laughs> People contain multitudes, you right? know? Like so many, so many layers. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was kind of like... I remember following, like becoming aware of who Alex Proyas was because mm-hmm. of The Crow. I mean, The Crow right. made a big impression on me right. at that time that it came out and a lot of other people and then you're like well what is he going to do next and i think this was the, what he did next yeah he was hired the next movie he was hired for was casper oh wow and he turned it down and did the crow next mm. yeah mm-hmm. but then somehow his career like i remember after dark city it was like well where did he go and then if i remember correctly i remember like I had to look this up at the time, like I was following along. He made like an Australian 
like garage band movie, I think called yeah. like Garage Days or something yeah. like that. But I think it only got released in Australia because <laughs> yeah. he's Australian, right? He is. He was born in Egypt to Greek parents and grew up in Australia. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Which okay. I kind of love. <laughs> yeah. So then, this, yeah, this movie was completely shot on soundstage in Australia. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's Fox Fox Studios Sydney, mm-hmm. where the following year after this was released. They would film the Matrix. Yeah, they, they would. Sure would. They used they used parts of this set to film the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can they used, tell. They used yeah. parts of the Zeitgeist or whatever to make the Matrix from this movie. Yeah, yeah. This kind of because I mean I remember seeing these like you know as they came out and so that way the Ma- the Matrix I guess wasn't all that special at the time because yeah. you're like well last year I saw. You know, dark yeah, and <laughs> but that's, watching it tonight, I remember that there were a lot of comparisons at the time. But part of the problem was is that not many people saw this movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. I was like the only guy who saw it. I yeah. mean, yeah. you and my dad, Colin. It was a and Roger Ebert. And Roger, yeah, Roger Ebert loved, he loved this, movie. this movie. Didn't he call it? It was like the best movie of 1998. Yep. Damn, uh, he loved this he movie. Famously, does or did this um, every year. He would go to a, a college. I'm not. I can't remember which one. And they would take a movie and they would break it down shot by shot in in a class and discuss every single shot. And like people in the audience could shout out, you know, and just talk about every frame. Damn. And it t- took like a week. Damn. And he did Dark City. That sounds uh, like fun. This, this one would take forever. <laughs> well, I remember him saying like the amount of setups and shots uh, that comprise this movie is like way more than you need. You know, huh. in order to, to tell this story. And you can kind of tell because, I mean, there is like a rhythm to the editing where they're just like he's cutting all, all all over the place, you know. Yeah, the almost almost every cut of this movie is only like two seconds. Mm. Like, seriously. Yeah. So it's just I mean, I don't know if you notice, but it's tons. It's just nonstop. Yeah. And it's all it's never like, well, not it's often not going back to like a shot that's already been used. Mm. I guess that's the thing. It's, it's like he's going to shots. new it's shots yeah. every time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Two seconds. I mean, it's just so many. That's so many cuts. Yeah. It, it <laughs> seems like it's a lot of work. Uh, so, and then, yeah, Alex Proyas then got iRobot, mm-hmm. uh, which had a style, I guess I wasn't, you know, like expecting from him based on the crow and dark city. No. And then gods of, Egypt. Which that has a is, style. It does. That movie has a style. I, I don't know if it works, but it has one. I can't wait till we watch that one. Yeah, yeah that is one of the most bizarre. It's I mean, weird. we're going to have to do that at yeah. some point because oh, yeah. it is one of the most bizarre movies of the 21st century. Yeah, absolutely. I know. And I feel like it's kind of grown on me because like, I appreciate how weird it is, you know? This yeah. is the one with like the half giant. Yeah. 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 Giant Jamie Lannister. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. But I think because that one bombed so bad, he's been kicked off <laughs> into obscurity again. Yeah. Or is he working on anything? You don't know? Mm-hmm. Not really. He's, um, I think he was, he's now on like the Australian film and something board or so i don't know mm, he's not, not working on like a tv series or something we don't know i guess is what um, we're i don't remember i i looked earlier and I, I couldn't remember i was i think it was more excited about the writers of this movie uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> i would be kind of surprised though if yeah hbo or amazon or somebody hadn't given him like a tv right. series to do or and something, i was like how is he not yeah. doing right a TV i'm sure right he is probably somewhere yeah. out there we just haven't heard of it um Okay, so I guess a uh, thing to talk about going into this movie, it is 24 years old, I think, at this point. Are we talking spoilers in order to make sense of what we're seeing or see it all in context? Oh, he's he's still working. Looks like he's doing a movie. Like, so it looks like he's doing short movies, actually. Never mind. He's doing, mm. he's he did doing Knowing. Oh, yeah, the Nicolas Cage movie. Oh, wow. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Fuck. Which one was next? That was right around that same time. And right, because that was mixed the same up. two. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like yeah. which one? Yeah, the Nicolas Cage <laughs> knowing movie. Uh, also, Jessica Biel, was it? Yeah, but that was before Gods of Egypt. Yeah, yeah. that was. Um, yes, yes, it was. Okay, so there's going to be spoilers in this yeah. in this episode, but the movie's 24 years old. We're hoping that you've seen it. If you haven't, you should stop now and go and go watch it. And even then, or, I don't know that we'll be able to, like, you can probably still watch and be like, oh, yeah, like, I don't think we're going to yeah. really give you that whole feeling of this movie. This is, <coughs> oh, my goodness. This is not going to be the most, like, intellectual analysis of this movie because it, 
I just watched it for the first time and I feel like I'm still digesting it. <laughs> okay. So like, I don't feel like I'm in a position to fully like <laughs> give a full dissertation on this movie. You know, this is, it, this is a movie you have to absorb if yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> and it does play a little different the second time around. Mm. Um, I guess that's what I appreciated from watching it. Yeah. You know, oh, like, should we, again, should we let them know we watch the director's cut? Yes. Um, yeah, is that I guess. Yeah. Right. Because the original cut, was uh, uh 1998 the director's cut was sometime in the mid 2010s or something like that they let him go back because it's built up a cult following so a new line cinema said okay you can go back and tweak it um how much did he tweak it well this is a good question see i've seen this before holly this is the first time so she, holly has seen the movie before this is yeah. her first time seeing the director's cut Correct. so i mean would you say it is a completely different experience Yes. Really? I think so. Just because the like the the theatrical cut, it has it starts with a voiceover from Kiefer Sutherland explaining Jesus. like all of the twists that happen in the movie. It's actually it's, like, it's his speech when they're in the boat. Yes. It's like it's, line for it's, line. It's that when dialogue. he was saying that, I was like, I bet this was the trailer. Yes, that was it was. The, that was my thought when he was his, saying, I was like, I bet this his, uh, right here was his the exposition dump mm-hmm. is like the beginning of the movie. It's like Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. It, this movie is compl- is compared to Blade Runner a lot, actually. Nice. That. Yeah, and yeah. that was so the the addition of the voiceover for the theatrical <laughs> cut was because the studio was like. You know, we don't think people are going to be able to follow this movie. So why don't we just tell them right up front what it's but I feel about? Like it's, I, feel like it's, I feel like it's that kind of movie that like that's why you're watching it to piece it together. Yeah, yeah but that's, you know? I guess, what we're going to get from Michaela and Sean, yeah. how it uh, how it, you know, kind of uh, unfolds itself sure. <coughs> as a mystery, because it's like it's a police procedural. It's a detective movie. Mm-hmm. It is film noir. Yeah, it is film noir. I was because I kept seeing this in black and white as I was watching. I'm just like, all this imagery is is standard noir stuff. Lighting, the I mean, the characters, yeah. costumes. Yeah, because there's a lot of like you're saying like 50s era. Yeah, oh, film yeah. noir. I mean, because they they very specifically didn't want you to know what era this was supposed to be. Yeah, but there's also a lot of like German expressionism. I mean, when mm-hmm. you look yeah. at it, you're like mm-hmm. Fritz Lang, you know, yeah. or yeah. Uh, you know, Metropolis. Or, oh, right. uh, like Metropolis is another one that it's compared to a lot. Yeah, and, um, everyone like, also looks like Nosferatu. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, well, oh, the characters. Well, yeah, I was, yeah. was going to say, you know, not, speaking of Nosferatu, German cinema. Um, Tim Tim Burton's Batman yeah. had yeah. a lot of influence on these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So all, those, all the red swirls and everything. Yeah, and you have um, you Batman Returns. Yeah, I was trying to think, like, is Keith for Sutherland's character, like, is it uh, Peter Lorre and um, Mad, um, it's not Mad, how, what is the Mad Doctor? What the hell is the name of that movie? Mad Love. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, are they drawing from those kind of things? So there's like a hodgepodge of uh, stylistic influences, um, I guess, uh, and, uh, and it does take pl- place in a dark city. It's a city at Indeed. night, basically. Um, you know, kind of think the sets from Batman or mm-hmm. The Crow. So yeah. it kind of does have that. Um, you feel um, and those. Uh, they always kind of give me like a claustrophobic kind of feeling. Like even though you're on a street and there's bridges and there's traffic, you realize that you know it's like it still feels. It feels like you would have to go up very far to get a clear look anywhere. Mm. Yeah. So I get what you're saying when it feels closed in. Yeah, I mean yeah. they even literally do that as part of one of the scenes in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and that's that's intentional. To have that claustrophobic feeling. Um, but yeah, I was thinking that at one point when Jennifer Conley's walking down the street and I, I, there's just something about her because she seems kind of like ethereal to me. She seems kind of, I don't know. And I just, I was like, I don't like seeing her on this tiny like street space. I'm like, I feel like she can't breathe. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's probably the, yeah, the that's psychological. The idea. Yeah. That's the idea. Yeah. I think even the end of the movie, you know, kind of bears that out, right? Exactly, a, yeah. That's part of the plan. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so for the first time watcher, um, as you're putting this movie together, uh, where and when did you think it took place? I mean, that's, I, for me, that's impossible to pin down. I was like, it's some steampunky alternate reality. Like, that's yeah, the like closest nothing, I could get, yeah. Nothing real considering oh, the right. people who are mm-hmm. below ground. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like, oh, none of this makes sense. It could be anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, which was the intention. Yeah, it yeah. it made me a little concerned because it it reminded me of like 
League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, like, mm-hmm. or like the shadow, you know, I was like the way these sets look and the vibe of this is like mm-hmm. that late nineties comic book style. I do not enjoy. So yeah. I was like, Oh God, here we're, where are we going with this? God damn, they all look like they all that. look the same. Yeah. Exactly. It's too much. Yeah. There's that, um, I guess, you know, the 90s were like a very dark, uh, you know, as far as cinema went, dark photography was like the thing. Lots of Mm -hmm. shadows and all this. And then, you know, when you look at like the movies that we have now and they're all bright and full of, you know, all sorts of color. Yeah. It's like the nineties is like this kind of, you know, yeah, see our episode on the prophecy. For, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dingy and grungy. It says a lot about our yeah. generations. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So who, who are our characters in this movie? Um, we've got John, John Murdoch, John mm. Murdoch played by Rufus Sewell, who we would know from. Anything? It's a question. shock to me that I'm supposed okay. to know who this person I is. You guys, he, no, he was in um, a Knight's Tale. He was in, was he in Marie Antoinette, or no, the no. other one. I feel like you guys are trying to implant memories in my yeah. brain, making me think this guy's a in, real person. Yeah. 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 He, was, they, he was in. Um, I'm t- he was in a lot of movies that I watched a lot <laughs> back then. Like he, a Knight's Tale, I watched a lot. Uh, Bless the Child. Do you remember that yep, one? Yep. Uh, With Kim uh, Basinger, they yeah. tried to make him a star at some point. Like somebody in Hollywood said, Rufus Sewell's got star quality. Yeah. He's even holiday he did rom-com <laughs> yeah and I, don't, he's, uh, I don't think it's he, um is he british is he yeah he's british, okay, he's british. Mm-hmm. yeah that i remember him being because then it mm-hmm. makes sense he would be a, like a, a prince and something that but he was in something recently what was he in he was in hamlet with kenneth Branagh. this person has hamlet. never existed in my life up until <laughs> yeah, right I, now I, like he's one of those people that like i've always just known his face i'm like oh it's that guy i can't mm. believe you don't know no him. no and then you said his name and i was even more lost yeah, Rufus i was like wait we took a step backwards when you yeah. said the name i've seen him in something he was an but... old if you guys watched that yeah just recently yeah yeah, he was yeah. In... was he yeah, yeah. He was. that's who he was the anger guy who, uh, well, I can't say much yeah, about yeah, that movie, but yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, we'll talk about him again when we watch Gods of Egypt. <laughs> oh, yeah. <of> course. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was in The Illusionist. He's in lots of stuff. So he's pals with Alex Perez, yeah. then, if he's yeah. bringing him See, back I all saw, those years later. In, if he was in The Illusionist, I saw every other movie that was the same, but the different Magic people. Yeah. yeah. So I saw <laughs> The Prestige, yeah. and he was in that one. I saw The Matrix when he was in this one. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just, I've just he's, the, he's the great value version of these things, and I've just seen the I know. Yeah, it yeah. never really, yeah, leading man, you know, didn't really work out for no. him, it seems like. But. So John Murdoch is yeah. a guy who wakes up in a bathtub in this sure. movie. This yeah. is a pretty good opening for, like, what the fuck is going on. Yeah, it is. And uh, he doesn't, he's lost his memory. Yes. Yeah. And he will a- gain many more as the movie goes on. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a there's a dead woman in the apartment, so mm. the uh, question Hate it when is, that happens. Yep. Isn't right. that the worst? You just wake up and there's a dead woman Those in the apartment. Days. I know. God so damn it. Who, did, who killed her? Yeah. Is I guess the question. Did Jigsaw. he kill her and he can't remember? Jigsaw killed her. Because there's a lot of spirals. There's a lot of spirals. Yeah. A lot of spirals, yeah. Before Saw came along. But yeah, here it's like put to a particular use. Well, maybe this maybe it represents the same thing it does in Saw, but uh so he sets out into the dark city. Mm. I'm saying that's a terrible title for this movie and probably contributed to its bad performance at the box office. Bad title? Yes or no? Dark I don't know. What else do you call it? Yeah, I was like, it's an accurate title. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it gives you, I mean, it's not going to give away the whole story. Yeah. What what else would you call it that you would, that wouldn't give it away? I don't know. I haven't come up with it. I feel like Dark City is appropriate. I think so too. Okay. Like I can't. Yeah, it's not going to give you, you know, yeah. the people underground searching I think for souls. It, I think it would have done better with someone else in the lead. Probably. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think that was. The I think downfall. we would remember it better now. Yes. If it had because right star. now it's just a bland. Yeah. I know. I know. These two have no idea who the fuck he is, but no I always idea. liked him. Yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't have leading man star power. Right. Because yeah. I think this was probably. Early, I mean, I think this is the first time I ever saw him. So I don't know what he was in before this, but I think the idea. Being being, if this was a launching into a bigger, this became a hit. He became in demand, mm. and now we'd all be like, "Oh, Rufus Sewell's early movie," yeah. but it didn't work out yeah. that way. Do you think he just looks at Keanu's career and he's like, "God damn it!" Like <laughs> <laughs> I was this close. Mm-hmm. That should be me. <laughs> well, he um, wanders out into the night in order to try and figure out who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like the first again, t- like all of us do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, well, I mean the. I often go through life wondering who I am. So. Doesn't that in become the like uh, a part the of the theme of this movie is like, are you the sum of your 
Memories is me- the memories that you carry yeah, actually well, make you yeah, who what you makes are. A, what makes a human? Yeah. Which is also Memento, which probably came out right around the same time. Mm. It did. And Christopher Nolan's like, <laughs> I can keep going and make the, <laughs> yeah. my version of this. I can do more of that. <laughs> yeah. Christopher Nolan's like, huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Christopher Nolan saw this movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And he's <laughs> like, ooh, I can, I can build cities magically, too. <laughs> um... Actually, now that you're saying that, holy cow. Yeah, was, uh, yeah. The, the, the third act of Inception yep. is very similar. Building things with your mind. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, so... Uh, without, <laughs> yeah, so this movie influenced the next 15 years. Yeah, I was like, so I, but got none of the credit. Got none of the credit. So the saying, Matrix got all the credit so we're instead. that yeah. all modern cinema comes from Dark City is what we're saying. I think these are the discoveries we make. Yeah. 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 But then yeah. it all comes back from, like, the 20s and stuff. I was are like, you yeah, saying, but like, we can uh, go yeah. back to... Yeah. 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 Time is a flat circle. Nothing is new. Um, But I did have that sensation right at the end of this movie i was actually thinking about like i i I, like i could see the christopher nolan ending i'm like at least it's not going to end with a spinning top which would be right his method of doing it Mm, i might have preferred that (laughs) yeah i think i might i was actually thinking that too i was thinking about like the spinning top ending and i was like you know what i wouldn't mind that right yeah yeah i would have preferred it i think we got i think i think the whole thing is the spinning top the whole city at that point you just pull back and but it's not suggesting that mm. real like the main character i guess is you know cuz the spinning top ending would be like everything that just happened is because you've been watching the movie from like a psychotic's point of view right. or something like that right mm-hmm. this is actually saying like i mean you know he ends up a superhero <laughs> by the much yeah. like the matrix yeah. uh, <laughs> um okay so right so who else do- who else is in this, right? Well, Jennifer Connelly's yeah, in Jennifer this, as Conley. you said. Um, mm-hmm. She plays his wife. Mm-hmm. We've got William Hurt, who's a big part of this movie. Mm-hmm. Which always seems to be when you have William Hurt in a science fiction movie, it means like... Uh, Police officer. Yeah, but it seems like he has an, a, a, an affinity for sci-fi stuff that he always kind of cool. true. Yeah. <laughs> he did do uh, Lost in Space, didn't he, the movie? Yeah. And didn't he, was he in the TV version of Dune? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Who was yeah. he in that? Do you know? Doing, yeah. I, I can't remember if he was Duke Atreides. I think. Huh. And, oh, he? All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, that or he was the emperor. I think he was Duke Atreides. I can't remember now. Hmm. But um, yeah. So um, mm-hmm. um, in this version, I don't know if you noticed uh, Jennifer Connelly's singing voice is her own in the yeah. theatrical. She's dubbed over. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was gonna really? say because when she was singing, I'm like, that's her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She matches yeah. it too well. Like, yeah. Wow. Because I, w- I was thinking, I was like, well, I get why they dubbed it over in the movie because, like, it's okay. But yeah, it's yeah, not like, fine. like you couldn't, she couldn't have an actual music career. Yeah. Right. No. No. But right. she's also like singing in a kind of low rent bar to like 15 people. So it kind of makes sense. So that's her deal, though. She's like uh, a singer, nightclub a lounge singer. singer. Yeah. 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 Um, and John Murdoch. She thinks has gone missing because she had an affair. Correct. And he left in a in a huff three weeks mm-hmm. prior. And William Hurt, as the detective, is finding all these dead hookers mm-hmm. everywhere. Yes. For the last like, three weeks. Yep. And yeah. so someone's been killing these um, women of the night, and he thinks it's John Murdoch because mm-hmm. uh, the most know. recent one was found in the hotel room that was registered to him. Yes. yes, and he does keep ending up in the same places that dead people soon follow yeah Truth. but john is seeing strange things as he's out and about because every night at about midnight well he finds that he's being pursued by shadowy gentlemen yes white yeah. shadowy gentlemen these guys <laughs> in, we're saying pale pale like, as in bald. this is where the nosferatu of it all comes in yeah pale yeah. different uh heights which I, I like the that juxtaposition of the very the tall one the mr sleep I think is the small child. Yes, Mr. Sleep. <laughs> the creepy small Mr. Yes. Hand. Child. Mr. Hand, Mr. Mr. Book. Hand, Mr. Yeah. Book. Mr. Hand is um, um, Richard O'Brien uh, yes. from a Rocky, Rocky Horror, Horror Picture Horror. Show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he's like the leader of the 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 guys that are the strangers, I guess they call them, that are pursuing they, him. Yeah, they call them the strangers. Okay. Um, the helicopter pilot from Mad Max or Road Warrior is the other one who's not the child. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. right. they shot in Australia, right? So. Right. 
<laughs> they have these like big leather dusters that are like turtleneck, yeah. like high necks, and yeah. they're and really yeah. pale and like reptilian looking. And, and, it, and yeah, the overall look, and then when we find out that they like fly around, yeah. they really do remind me of the gentleman from Buffy the Vampire mm-hmm. Slayer, mm-hmm. which yeah. I think yeah. took from this, uh, yeah. right? Because yeah. that was after '98, wasn't it? Maybe? Didn't Buffy start in like '96? '96, '96, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, for that, because I don't remember what season that episode was. Yeah. Whether it was before or after this, I'm not sure. Try and find out. There's a lot of shared imagery there with uh, guys in dark hats Uh and coats and Mm -hmm. pale white Mm corpse-looking faces sneaking out of the dark to come and get you. Yeah. Um, Just so creepy. They are very creepy. Mm -hmm. I applaud the creepiness of them. Mm -hmm. Because Because when they first arrive and they just start levitating up and attacking and everything, yeah, they're very creepy. Yeah. I like them. And you're still trying to figure out what the hell, trying to get your bearings, right? Because the movie's showing you stuff, but not explaining it, which I kind of like about it because it keeps on, there's like a sense of mystery, like, okay, now that's happening. Yeah. Okay, now what, you know. That's why I said the theatrical cut is totally different from the director's cut because of that. Because they tell you up front. Because they tell you up front what's going, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching it unfold is a totally different experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, you know, if you know that, like, well, but the first there was darkness and then there was the strangers and they used their yeah. powers to tune and all this other Don't stuff that. right off the bat. Um, yeah, that, seemed, that does seem like a... Have more faith in your audience. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Which he did. That, this was his cut. <laughs> there you go. Um, so in wandering around the city, he sees these strange things, not just the strangers who are pursuing him, but also at the stroke of midnight. What happens? Everyone. Sleep. It's Bim Hour. <laughs> Everyone falls asleep. It's anti Bim yeah. Hour. Yeah. It's of Bim Hour. It's zero Bim Hour. That's a reference to the <laughs> Apple for those of you just <laughs> tuning in. The Canon Films Extravaganza. So, what happens during anti Bim Hour? Everyone, Everyone sleeps. sleeps. And then what happens? They retune. Yes. Which is, okay, explain tuning. They retune. So they use their psychic abilities to reshape the world. Who does? The strangers. The strangers. But not everyone. Did anyone like there's there's only specific like some people stay the same and some people change. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly it's a physical configuration of the city that they're in that they're tuning and they will mess with people as well. Yeah. I liked the couple that were clearly like poor and (laughs) in poverty and then they reconfigured into rich snobs. Mm -hmm. I liked that one. Yeah. Because I think that's the thing. It's like they have so many. I mean, I guess we got to talk about what's going on here, right? In order yeah, to, no, yeah, to kind of, uh, you know, in. then we'll go, you know, through this and be like, okay, this is what's actually happening. So there is a. I thought when I saw this movie in the theater, a shock reveal in the last act of this movie that like blew my mind. And I don't know how it did it because when you're watching it now, you're like, how did you not see that? coming they basically tell you that it's coming yes okay (laughs) for some stupid reason on my part i still thought we were on like an alien planet or something or an alternate future or something like that or the truman show those things yeah Yeah. or the truman show (laughs) it's kind of those things it's basically an alien planet i mean one they've created from from the many uh universal studios globes that they have underneath that are powering up everything. <laughs> yeah, cuz it's ba- it's a spaceship, right? It's their yeah. it's yep. their yeah. vessel and we're told that this is an alien race that's like they're dying and they're facing extinction. Yes. And so they have abducted human beings from Earth and brought them here to run these experiments on them. Right. Yeah, we have, we saw the small version where uh Kiefer Sutherland has the rat in the maze. I mean, just expand that to the huge size of the city that they're in, and it's basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's why he's doing that experiment, right? Yeah. Is he's trying to figure out how do you get out of a maze that's all it is is it's just a, a looping it's, spiral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have existential crises all the time, but I've never thought about the fact that if another race came to me and was like, yo, can you save our entire race from extinction? I'd be like, dude, I have my own fucking problems. Are you kidding me? And now you want me to save an entire race I'm not even familiar with? <laughs> Holy shit. Like, like I got like enough going on already. Guys. We just need your soul. <laughs> Dude, chill. Just like, 
I don't, I only think about existentialism in terms of the human race, but man, can you imagine another race coming along and having their own existential crisis and exactly. expecting us to fix it? Yeah. They yeah, want yeah. the human race to fix this? Are you right. kidding me? No, yeah. wrong people. Wrong yes. people. No, I'm with like, you because lately I have been having yeah. an like, ongoing existential crisis. Yeah. And this movie was stressing me the fuck out. Right? <laughs> Same. I was like, I'm trying to not think about these things yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really think about that when I picked it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Take your baggage somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is kind of funny to me that these movies, because uh, it seems like this is like a theme through this era, The Matrix also, it's like they're very like pro-human movie where the humans are going to solve the, humans the aliens. The answer, yes. yeah, somehow, we can't like, solve our own damn problems. How the hell are we going to save another race? Yeah, there's got to be now. Uh, uh, like, you know, if you're killing if, our planet. If you're right? coming to us for help, you're we're fucked. The, we're like, like a way station in the middle of nowhere. Like, I'm convinced we are, we're not alone in the universe, but the next people are <laughs> way far away. <laughs> Everyone here. keeps coming to yeah. us to solve the problems. We are, pa- we are page 10 of a Google search. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I was going to say, have you seen that meme that says, like, I bet aliens ride past Earth with their doors locked? And I was like, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, exactly. You know how desperate a race would have to be to come to humans for fucking help? Like, <laughs> holy shit. Right. Well, they're looking Look what at happened it. To the Independence Day Resurgence. The movie. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the movie's seeing it from the point of view of, like, you know, because I guess this is what, like, you know writers always come up with like the thing that makes a human a human is their individuality and capability for imagination yes Mm -hmm. right whereas these strangers share a hive mind it is revealed yeah which is that's an interesting concept right like the thing that somehow very borgish right they're like you know everything they don't have any experiences of their own but that one guy mr hand does i guess he volunteers yeah, that scene I don't think is in the uh-uh. the theatrical cut. I don't think so. That little, it, just that line that mm-hmm. he has with her on the on the the dock. Mm-hmm. Um, so the strangers running this massive spaceship like exist in the control section of it, which is we see it's yeah. underneath the city. This is yeah, it's like the core of the of the city. Yeah, where they can concentrate their power. Mm-hmm. And they're all they telekinetic. Yes. Yeah. And so the tuning is. Yeah. And they've they say that um, they've basically they possess the like dead bodies of some of the humans that have died on the yes. planet or whatever. Um, That's creepy. Really creepy. <laughs> yeah. They're basically zombies walking around, yes. or like motorized uh, they're puppets. Hairless, yep. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're hairless corpses. Meat sacks, yes. yeah. yeah, it's like the Chuck E. Cheese like band performing robots, mm-hmm. but like yeah. they're yes. all people you used to live with. Yeah. yeah. And at first, I wasn't sure. I was like, "Well, why are you even doing that?" If, like, but then I realized that they do like to walk among right the people, and it makes sense. Or float among them, fly. Float among, among the them, people. As it were, yes. I'm like, well, if you're gonna float among the people, you might as well just be a weird alien. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You're kind of blowing your cover yeah, there. Yeah. Seriously. Actually, that's a good point that you bring up from the movie's logic. Yeah. Why, when they're in their own private space, are they not uh, just the squiddy alien? Right. Because they. But are they squiddy alien? Because they've created this. They've created this world. So why wouldn't they create the world to think that that's normal? It right, doesn't, exactly. Doesn't make sense that they'd possess these corpses. Yeah, because I think that's what we're supposed to get is something like. Um, well, they do that because they're trying. They're not. They don't want to influence the humans. I think. What would influence? But that would if assume they were the, that if all they were of the them. alien people. You know what I mean? But do all of them then go above ground? I mean, I guess that's what we're supposed to expect. Because this. So we're saying the tuning is basically at twelve o'clock every night. They shut down the city and make everyone everywhere sleep. Yeah. And then they reconfigure it using their machine that channels their their psychic power mm-hmm. and can build skyscrapers. And so you see cities folding and yeah. doing all this stuff and new yeah. uh, buildings erupting out of uh, nothing. Um, it's very cool. So they have to go cool. above ground in order to actually like position certain people and leave certain props as they're re-imprinting yeah. people with memories yes. every night. Yes. That's why they have to look like humans. But see, I mean, but the again, thing. like they've, they have programmed this world. They could program a world where it's normal to see a little squid thing running around. Yeah. It but doesn't I, make sense to me. But I think that would change the kind of very essence of how the humans act. Even if they did think, make them think it was normal. That's you're. That's still a human being acting to something outside of. I don't know how to it's, explain it's it. Experience well because they even say that the reason that the city looks the way it does is because 
That's the memories that they extracted from uh, people when they right. abducted them. Right, they got right, an idea right. of what a city, what human habitat looks like. Building you know? from memories. <laughs> Did they learn nothing? <laughs> this is very cool stuff. Um, <laughs> it is a nice dot to connect to uh, mm. everything else. Yeah. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. the aliens actually look like, what was the movie? Uh, was it the um, Donald Sutherland was in it? The Puppet Masters? That is one movie. Where that, yes, that the aliens did. were inside. Yeah, that's right. David Goyer, David Goyer wrote it. David Goyer, yeah. David Goyer wrote that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It all comes together. It does. But well, the, so the aliens are inside the brain. They're just inside the cranium uh-huh. of the dead corpse, moving it around. Yes. And they're a big squiddy thing. Yeah. How do you know they're a big squiddy thing? Because there's a scene early on when uh, Murdoch and the strangers are fighting, and yeah. one of them loses, and uh, like a blade comes down or whatever. Yeah, it like cuts the back, it cuts the top of his head off. And you see the thing crawling out. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, you when you do. see the yeah, you see like tentacles come out like the yeah. top of his head. And there's yeah. another okay, scene yes, that later right. on that I think they show it again. Later on, they make it fairly explicit. Is... I thought because you go into there's a shot that travels yeah. inside the eye of Mister Book yeah. and you see the thing swirling around. Right, and then brain. he does end up when he gets stabbed later. Yeah. The thing comes out. Okay, yeah. yes, that's yeah. it. it. Didn't uh, it? Didn't I didn't remember because it, it didn't seem uh, f- more f- uh, physical. It felt more. Um, more like an energy. Okay, is how I was interpreting mm-hmm. it. So I didn't think of it as. I wonder if that's alien. because of the CGI at the time. Probably. It kind of Probably. gives Probably. it that liquidy Probably. looking. It looks like Windows Media players coming out of their head. So yeah, yeah. It does. yeah. But it almost seems that they can't survive uh, in, in an oxygen environment because they, they, they don't they- like the moisture. <laughs> As it said and, earlier, but in the movie. even air, right? Like they come out and they die. You know, once yeah. they come out of the brain, they shrivel up and die. Um, oh, so, so is that why they're in the host body? It uh, protects them. I oh, wonder. I'm sure. Maybe that's it. They're leaving their own planet, and so they're like, "Okay, we can live inside this thing and yeah. puppet it around." So they're but we parasites, can't. and maybe that's why they have to so actually they have to have a host to survive in that environment. Yeah, and also if they're trying to figure out like the whatever the key to humans are that will save them, I think maybe they're getting ahead of it by being in human bodies that will help them in their process of of continuing on and using the humans as something yeah. that will save them. So they're just getting into the bodies. I think there's multiple uses for it. And their end goal does seem to be like they want to merge with uh, humankind in some way, but it has to be a humankind that can... So they don't lose all their abilities, yeah. but they do want some kind of individuality or something yeah. by the end of it. Very strange, yeah. strange, strange stuff to to plow through here. Mm-hmm. And so we have a human who has their powers. Yeah, in John. Well, because we yeah. find out that he doesn't sleep. I guess when everybody else is sleeping, he is still awake. Um, and that's so in why this he... world an insomniac is a superhero. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go. Because when Love you're awake, it. when everybody else is asleep, you see things that uh, other people miss mm. or whatever. That's very true. Mm. And Steve. so he sees all this uh, <laughs> stuff uh, taking place around him. You know, the strangers uh, changing things and mm-hmm. the world altering and all this. Mm-hmm. Um. So there's a detective movie also happening. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, it's, yeah, there it's, is. It's hard to. Yeah, because there's like this, like all these murders happening. There's a lot That's going on. Thing. It, Jennifer Connelly goes on her own like adventure for a minute, and that doesn't seem super relevant. Yeah, because at this point she's she's just looking for her missing husband. So right. Then when he shows up again, she realizes oh he's lost his memories, and she's concerned, and so she thinks so, like her whole mission is to like prove that he's not actually a murderer, and she's like trying to help him prove that he's innocent mm. and there's a much bigger picture happening and he's like what murders yeah. <laughs> because i guess that's the thing that's actually happening here right yeah. is that um because he like everybody is actually telling you this during the movie but i i guess on my first watch i didn't pick it up because the guy um so uh, detective bumstead right mm-hmm. is replacing <laughs> see i can't think of anything but fucking blondie when it comes to Bumstead, you know the 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 comic strip? comic strip, yeah. Oh, wasn't it Blondie? Archie, her husband oh, is Blondie was is Bumstead. Bumstead. Oh, they also I, used to sure. make old no idea. Blondie, yeah, Blondie movies used to play. Yeah, back no, in the I'm, day. I'm aware of the Blondie comic strip, okay. but I don't. I'm not that familiar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Bumstead. I think that was her last name. So okay. Yes. Well, he's just um, me. 
<laughs> this is just like George went is a certified genius territory. Same again. thing. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> like, sure, sure, Sean, whatever you say. No one's proved me wrong. I know, I like that. Uh, George went certified, <laughs> certified genius. genius by Mensa or something. Mm-hmm. We oh, still I'm haven't sure. determined, but there's a All certificate right. somewhere. In <laughs> um, but he's actually replacing a different um, police detective, Walensky, right? Mm-hmm. Who is like. Wilinski appears to be a detective who saw something on a case and lost his mind. And so right. he's one of those guys who's locked away in a room where the ceiling is way too damn low, drawing pictures all over the yeah. Yeah. the wall and mostly in spirals because Wilinski somehow, he doesn't have the knowledge that John does, mm. but he knows from like the human perspective He's actually figured out what's going on. He just can't see the bigger picture outside of it. He knows there's no way out of this. It's a maze. It's a closed environment, you know, and he's like, this is all a joke. There is no case. So if there's no case, there's no relationship between John and his quote unquote wife. Yeah. Like they never met each other before the first time that they meet in this movie. Here's, Here's my question. So the strangers are messing people's memories and making like giving them new identities every few days or whatever. And they're doing the same thing with the city, but it doesn't seem like they are observing them 24 seven because they don't know where John is. So what are they actually watching and learning from any of these people? Do they pick like one to watch in a day and study that one and then like come back to it? Because they also, you would think that they would be pretty quick to wipe the, the detective's memory clean if he's starting to figure it out. Right. Mm-hmm. And so they're not they, watching them. How did they lose him? Right. You know, how did they lose him when this is all happening within a contained spaceship? That's what I mean. Like, that I is their spaceship. I don't, how are you like, we can't find him? Yeah, I don't think they're actually watching them. I, right. Unless they're like watching one specific person for 24 hours or whatever. Yeah. I think what we're realizing is they're really bad at this. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're there's just no really bad at no this. No wonder they're dying. Yeah. There's yeah. too many humans in there, and there's fewer of them, I think, and they've set this whole thing up. And so, yeah, I think they are observing specific. So most of the people are just wandering about their, you know, like you're on your path, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. And you'll be on it for maybe a week or something. I don't know. And then until they are done examining you and, or seeing the results of it, and then they'll switch you with somebody else. But at mm-hmm. the same time, they're working on somebody over here who's brand new today Mm -hmm. so i think Kiefer sutherland so his character he's a doctor yeah um and he's the one who's going around actually imprinting them with the memories because he's somehow uh good at it so they they made him wipe his own mind yeah so he could uh where's those deleted scenes i feel like there was a lot more to that scene where he's all bloodied up and and yeah. stabbing just, himself in the forehead. I just feel like the, the, there, there's got to be a spreadsheet or something keeping track of these people. Like I don't, I don't understand where the experiment is. Yeah, it's like Kiefer's, there should be a more a better observation system yeah, than like, what they so have. So you're taking Kiefer Sutherland, like this like gimp asthmatic that can barely hobble around, and he's going out every night and like giving people new memories. Mm-hmm. What's happening after that? Are they is, like, is there one person that's on surveillance and then they watch him for a couple days and then they go on to someone else? Like, well, I guess he does. I, I don't understand the experiment. He does state the objective of it, I guess, is to see, like, as they're trying to find what makes Kiefer Sutherland has told them that human beings have a soul. And they're like, yeah. what yeah. the hell is that? And he says, yeah. well, it's a thing that makes them individual from mm-hmm. each other. It's the idea that even if you give a person completely new memories, yeah. you still can't crack that thing within them that is their nature yeah. or whatever. There's still love. There's still empathy. There's still all those things. Yeah. So I guess the idea the experiment is like, well, if we want to see if this guy's a murderer, we'll give him the memories that he's a murderer. We'll right, give him the motive that that's he's a murderer. What I mean. Okay. So this week it's John. Yeah. But they're clearly not watching John because they keep losing him. But I wonder if that was because he didn't go, he didn't follow his memory path, right? Because when Kiefer saw that, well, this is what we learn out, or learn later, the reason that uh, he wakes up in the bathtub with no memory yeah. is because of his ability to suppress the tuning or whatever. And uh, he wasn't able to right, supplant he didn't, the memory. So he didn't get all the memories. He got okay. like a little bit of the syringe. And so he got so some of the memories. So there is a map in the memory and they follow the specific map and there's surveillance along that path. Yeah. You know that he's going to go see uncle Carl or, you know, that he's going to go do something or I guess he wouldn't have gone to Carl, but he would have like killed these women and then probably eventually killed his wife or something. Yeah. And they'd see the outcome of that. Yeah. 
But that never happened because he woke up in the middle of the imprint and Kiefer Sutherland freaked out, and ran out, and they weren't able to catch him there. And so mm-hmm. he got loose. And now he's loose in the Matrix. Loose in their contained environment. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that they far. own. But I guess the, the thing, it's like you could let a guy run around doing whatever, but the problem is they set that up too. The stakes is that he is somehow influencing their ability to control things because he has the power to control things. And they're like, well, fuck, we got to... We got to get him. <laughs> this is kind of can't just let him go. It's kind of the problem with this movie is that everything has like a caveat or a loophole, and it just kind of creates this like endless like stream of rules that are set up and then immediately broken, and it kind of is a lot to keep up with at times. Mm-hmm. It is a lot to keep up with because it's a movie that even as it's going, like it just keeps feeding you revelations. Mm-hmm. I guess right. you know. Which I suppose is different than like how usually movies work out where you're like, okay, 20 minutes, you set it up and the next 40 minutes, whatever you Mm -hmm. figure it out, then you resolve it. Yeah. And this one in the third act is still. The the movie is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The movie is doing to the audience what it's doing to the characters. It's feeding them more and more. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's because it has like a revelation to, you know, dole out. Which is, you know, something that I guess you don't get in a lot of movies, it yeah. seems like, right? It's like, so it can keep you kind of hooked. Mm-hmm. Um, Keeps you guessing for sure. Yeah. And Jennifer Connelly's, I think her thing is, is the idea of like what love is. I suppose she loves this guy that she just met. Yeah. Yeah. Even though she thinks that she's loved him forever. And so that's the thing is like, will she still love him again if she doesn't remember who she mm-hmm. is or whatever? The yeah. Hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Constant experimentation. So all of these characters mm-hmm. end up uh there's um there's an ongoing um they're constantly looking for Shell Beach throughout this movie. Yeah. That's the that's a common theme. They, there's postcards, there's books, everything is pointing to Shell Beach and every person that Murdoch comes in contact with that's like his test question. Do you know where Shell Beach is? And they're like, yeah, and he's like, how do you get there? And no one can tell him how to get there. Yeah. Because we realize that they don't actually have the memory of ever being there. It's just implanted. So Mm -hmm. you can't find it. So that becomes like the... The driving force. Like, get to Shell Beach. Yeah. That's where the answers are going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's when they go there. They, um, um, The detective... Because they they all form, like, alliances. Yeah, Um, because at first he's hunting John down, thinking... Like, oh, this is my murder suspect. But then the more the movie unravels, the more the detective realizes, like, oh, there's a way bigger picture here. Because after he meets John and actually talks to him, John's like, well, you know, explain this shit and twirls a book around with his mind. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, oh, yeah, that's weird. So now he kind of believes him. So now he's like, all right, well, let's find this Shell Beach. Yeah, he definitely knows that something's off. I guess yeah. that's yeah. the thing that kind of makes him... Yeah, because he's like, when was the last time you, you saw the sun? Not like when you were a kid. Like, yesterday, a week ago, when did you see the sun? Yeah. And yeah. he's like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're right. All right, so when when you guys first saw mm-hmm. the revelation, that I guess we, it's a nice way that they do it. I was kind of bummed that... Bumstead gets killed in the process. Yeah, of me too. Me too. That was that sucked. Mm-hmm. So is there like a shield around them that he goes through? I think into, so. Into the actual it, depth yeah, it of looks space? like some sort of like protective Some field, mm-hmm. that, an atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, an atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it, you get to see the ship from his point of view as he like falls out a hole in the side of it. Mm-hmm. As they find Shell Beach, it's just a wall, a yeah. brick wall, and they bash through it. And there's you know space. Yeah. <laughs> Now, was that Which, surprising or like it, no. you, you're like no i saw it coming and no because there were so many like little things they said that implied it was it was not like on planet earth so i was like it's, if nothing yeah. else i knew it wasn't gonna be normal right yeah. like with this is no normalcy right. behind that wall compared to whatever else is going mm-hmm. on so yeah no. I, kn- I knew it was gonna be space but the minute i saw it i like couldn't breathe because mm-hmm. just like the panic like oh fucking god yeah. what if that was real yeah, yeah that yeah. would be the huh. most terrifying yeah. thing in the history of everything that's why gravity is like one of the most terrifying it's, movies ever dude. made god oh. the idea of like flying through space like that movie's so yeah. cr- and th- there's nothing you can fucking do about <laughs> it nope, like you, you gotta it. hope a heart attack Falling. kills you if there is one thing that terrifies me and interests me it's space <laughs> yeah i'm saying like yeah. <laughs> i was at work the other day and i was and i was like 
oh man, I'm so tired. And they're like, why? And I was like, I was just up really late. I was just thinking and about space. I was like, I was like, I was up really late. And they're like, oh, I remember those days. I was like, no, I wasn't texting a boy. I was thinking about black holes and it was really yeah. freaking me out. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I, don't, I don't understand how astrophysicists and stuff do their job. How do people study that stuff and not have like mental breakdowns constantly? Yes. I cosmic, know. cosmic horror. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's scary. Like man. seriously, sometimes just sit and think about how the universe is endless and you'll have a panic attack. Dude, I know. When I think about like, it's, it's <laughs> It's infinite and expanding. And I can't what does that mean? understand that. Yes. And yeah. my brain literally can't grasp that. That yep. clip that they released, like the sound of a black hole. Oh, that yeah. yeah. Released, well, that's horrifying. Has, yeah. That has scared me for weeks. Yeah. That's, it's that's terrifying. Just, that is. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so, people yeah. that research this shit all the time. They're not normal people. They can't like, be. I find it fascinating. But yeah. at the same time, I'm horrified. Yeah. yeah. It's terrifying. And it, and it's all finite. At some point, it'll yeah. all slow down, cool off, and... But expand, right? Damn, Colin. It never stops. <laughs> no, they said the momentum will slow. How? That's the laws of thermodynamics. Oof. All right. <laughs> so stuff I will never understand. <laughs> I don't so much get it. it. I don't get it. So um, just go watch Interstellar again. We'll be fine. Yeah, there you go. <gasps> You've never seen it. You well, love space. Good. Yeah, yeah, you seen sure. Interstellar. A, a, yeah. I know. Shut up. It's I know. really good. Jeez. I know. It's You'd a thinky like one, it. like that one. That one. That movie made me cry a lot. That's what I've heard. Yeah, this, this is a sad fucking movie. Oh yeah. my god, Holly. I know. But you would like it. I know. <laughs> you should watch it. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Interstellar, just yeah. for Holly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our characters now knowing that uh, they're on a spaceship, and I guess, yeah, seeing it coming, like the whole boat ride there, they're like, we were abducted from somewhere else. And William yeah. Hurt has that nice, like, well, where were we abducted from? And like, we, nobody remembers. Yeah, we don't So they're like human beings off in the middle of, and it kind of, because like alien UFO X-File stuff was a big thing in the 90s, it was like right then, it's like, oh, alien abduction, that's what they're doing. Everybody, they're picking up. Um, uh, putting them in the maze. Yeah, makes sense. But they they capture John and they take him down into the power center. Oh yeah, right? and Kiefer Sutherland does have a plan to actually save the world. He still got the is it the original imprint that he was yeah, going to put into him? He he created this imprint that had like all of the answers to yeah. all of his questions. Right, and but then he also had. Uh, all the collective memories of the hive mind of the strangers that he was yes, trying to no. that was the original purpose no that was what the strangers so they're like okay we got we got this guy and he can tune i guess that's the thing that yes. somehow the idea is that humans also possess possess an evolutionary trait and that if you're in this scenario for so long they will adapt and somehow develop telekinetic powers like their captors. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that makes him special. So they're like, okay, we want to merge our hive mind with him. So they were telling Kiefer Sutherland, go and, you know, you're going to take our collective memory and, and inject right. it into yeah. him. So he's got we don't need anybody ranges. else. Yeah. But Kiefer Sutherland earlier in the movie tries to get John when he doesn't understand what's going on. He's right. like, take this syringe. This is a special one that I made. And so basically he took the John Murdoch profile, Mm -hmm. but injected himself into the memories Uh, where he explains a lifetime of getting to know. So it's like, since you already have, I know now in the present that you understand you can tune, but what if I taught you how to do it throughout your entire life Uh, and mm -hmm. you get that in an injection and like almost instantly... (laughs) Genius. It's like it's, you have a yeah, lifetime yeah. of like how his, to his use head their should have shit. gotten like yeah. three times bigger and just like, like I am all like, powerful. Like the head on MTV. You remember that cartoon? Oh, you remember I don't the head? Think so. uh, oh nope. Something no. something the rest of us don't remember. No, no the only I only remember was, the head detective and then Wienerville. No, it was it was on and the head of the family, the Charles Band. It was on the same thing. night no? with um. It was on the same night with Beavis and Butthead, the Max, and Eon Flux. It sounds. It was the head. Familiar. It was a dude with this okay. massive head that was, there was an alien living inside it. I believe you. Sounds like something they would put on at the time. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it Man, TV familiar. was weird. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I miss it. Back in the old liquid television yeah. days. Um, Please write in and tell me that you remember the head. Anybody? Yeah, the head. Anybody? Sure. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the final battle rages uh, between um, now superhero John Murdoch and Mr. Book. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Book's the head head dude. He's yeah. a scary looking one who so, runs wait, the whole question. Uh, the names. Is there any information on the names? Why they are Mr. Book, Mr. Hand, Mr. Face? 
Mr. Shadow. Mr. Shadow. Mr. Mr. Knight. Mr. Knight. Because they're cool. Well, sure. I like to think that when they were like learning the English language, those were just like basic words that those they learned. The so words. they're just like, we'll just go with that. <laughs> They're ESL they, names. Well, yeah. They don't, yeah. they don't <laughs> understand <laughs> names. They're like you are Mr. Book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they got the Mr. Mm-hmm. Well, that's something. Right. Yeah. Why do you even have to be that? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's okay. Because you know how they say there are. Um, like if your last name was Smith, you had a blacksmith in your family mm-hmm. at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. this was the start of that. Yeah. Like this is the start of the evolution to actual regular last names and whatnot. Like Mr. Book is a librarian. <laughs> well, or it would it would transfer from Mr. Book to okay, something. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, Alvin Mr. Hammerbook. Mr. Hand. What's Mr. Mr. Hand then? <laughs> What'd you got uh, for that one? Jefferson Hand. Allen Hand. And that's what it becomes Allen later on, right? Uh, down right, the yeah. Yeah, there would be a... a, a <laughs> yeah, a yeah but, but what's names? the profession that gives the hand the names? Oh, he's a writer. Saying, like, writer, yeah. writer. Okay. Yeah, what about so Mr. Book? Uh, what's he? He's a, a reader. A, reader. <laughs> a librarian, like you said. <laughs> a librarian. I already said that one. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. 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 Hand is an unfortunate Co- yeah. choice. <laughs> Cosmetic surgeon. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Well, there, oh wait, oh there are women. I was just saying, are there only men? Of, no, no, there are we women see trainers. Some. Yes. Oh, we saw some women. Yeah, we did. Everyone's bald, so yeah, because yeah, they're just same. taking corpses. They those yeah. ones yeah. that didn't work out, you know. Um, yeah. So there's a Titanic showdown. Uh, the, all the special effects come out here at the yeah. end. Mm, a telekinetic a of, showdown. Yes, yeah. a lot of Professor yeah. X. A lot of staring. Mind things happening. A lot of looks, a lot of stares. Yeah, and it's the, like the fighting the with the force. that comes out of the, I like the, the, the third eye or yeah. whatever. More than like current <laughs> yeah, Star Wars eye. where they're just like, Ugh! yeah, and there's nothing. What are you talking about? There was a shit ton of that in this movie too. Sleep every time. Well, there was yes. a fucking hand gesture. Yeah. And we and we argued, do they actually fall asleep if you don't say the word sleep? Right. They yeah. do say that a lot. I yeah. do wonder. They don't just point at somebody and they fall asleep. They have to walk up to you and do the, yeah. Do the Jedi hand wave and then yeah. say sleep. sleep. Yeah. Got big fingers. Yeah. yeah. It knocks people out on command. Yeah. In addition to the at midnight. Okay. So if you could have. Uh-oh. If you could have some something injected into your mind to just know it, what would it be? A language. Well, I mean, how to fire, fly a fighter plane. I don't know why. That'd be cool. Okay. Yeah, be awesome. Top Gun. Okay. He's like, I want to do that. That's cool. <laughs> a language. I would want to learn a language. Just a language. I'd want to learn all of them. I'm just trying to think what I can monetize the most. You know, to be like rich. Yeah. What What would be helpful to learn to be rich? You know. That's always my answer. Like any time people are like, "Oh, what kind of superpower do I'm like? I would want to learn. I would want to speak. Understand, read, and write in every language, mm-hmm. like Zachary Quinto one. and Heroes, yeah. or C three PO. Yeah. Wait, isn't that <laughs> basically? Aren't you, wouldn't you basically be a Highlander at that point, or no. an immortal? No, Technically. they don't like yeah. absorb their skills, do they? Highlanders. No, but they. they have but he was like the to key. learn all that stuff, right? And he was no, like, but I don't want to learn. I just want to oh, know. Oh, no, she. Power. She doesn't want to put any effort into learning yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Oh, I, no. At the end of Highlander, that's what I'm saying. At the end of Highlander, he's the key. The quickening, right? You win the quickening. He's the key. He knows every language. Every can talk to everyone. Huh. He's right. the key to everything in world peace. <laughs> I forgot that was the quickening. Yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Or C-3PO. Or yeah. C- yeah, either mm-hmm. one. Well, would it surprise you, listener, to learn that John wins this titanic conflict of mm-hmm. wills? Mm. And he now controls the world. I know. So this is also like, uh, you're like, oh, okay, great. For this one guy, he gets to reshape the right. world. Yeah. He definitely won't go poorly. Yeah. He just right. has to, con- if I concentrate hard enough, I can change the world. And I mean, <laughs> on top of that, like imagine being the only one with that knowledge. Yeah. Like True. that's awful. There's no good outcome for this. No. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's good if Power corrupts, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I know, yeah that's exactly. What, that's what, you know, like I was kind of watching it now, you know, like, Oh, well, but I think, you know, if he's your identification character, it's supposed to be awesome because now you can, you know, control the world at, at your uh, own at your, yeah, at your leisure. Yeah. Did all Very the uh, strangers world. die? No. See, that's, uh, that's, what, that's what I'm too. wondering. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like, is he going to have to, are they going to try and like rebel against his? Is he all too powerful at this point? Like, I think he's all too powerful. I think so, too. Yeah, because mm. at the end of it, he's actually able to create an ocean. He creates yeah. Shell Beach. And, and he creates an ocean and yeah. Mm-hmm. And tilts the entire platform toward the sun so the sun actually shines at this the end of this This is the movie. Flat Earther's Bible. Like, yeah. This is what they yeah. believe. They I think, think this, this is, is how this works, yeah. yeah. Are we sitting on top of a So maybe giant- this had a negative yeah. impact my, as well. I think so, because it is literally like it's flat. There's a dome around it, kind of. In, like there's, there's this, this race yeah. controlling the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. Like exactly. my question is, how far does he go? Does he make it so that it like rotates, so that eventually it has day and night? 
Does he create more vegetation? Like, how, yes, whatever he yes, wants, yes. right? What is he doing with this world? Well, we're also told that uh, Dr. Schrieber tells him that, that he can't make any more memories, right? Right. So basically, everybody is who they are right, right now. then. At that point, yeah. yeah. So it's like, at some point, do you have to tell them, you know, like, well, because you're going to figure it out. If you have a long enough time to explore the maze, you're going to know... And you're not reset. You're going to know there's a f- right. limitation to it. You That's know? why, like, the end of this movie is not happy to me. I just see so many problems. <laughs> yeah, but so it's, it's weird they play him. it off as happy. <laughs> good yeah. for him in this moment. Yeah, because because right now. Well, and yeah. he finds he has total power over physical reality Total power is not happiness yeah that's gonna be a problem be eventually a problem. Yeah, but what he what's he gonna do he's gonna all he wants to do is find he's gonna be crazy yeah, yeah probably yeah, yeah. but he wants like to Ozymandias. this is yeah, we this can is, write yeah. this is the sequel they're not a sequel we'll just we'll we'll take this and spin this it off this is a villain then, origin story yeah it really is <laughs> it's also the creation yeah. of earth yeah this is a lot this, yeah. is, a, this yeah. is a good jumping off point for a lot of possibilities remember how fucking sad Will Smith was in I Am Legend he had nobody to talk to yeah talking to the mannequins I mean, now did. imagine that he also that. had yeah. to just kill his dog yeah so. Well, yeah. so maybe he'll keep uh, Mr. Hand around because we do see Mr. Hand limping around at the end of the movie. They they're a ver- a v- they don't like the light, so uh, you know, I think like, he well he's about vampire. to die though. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I guess but he says he's dying. He I think because he's, he's separated from a lot of the collective. Yeah. He's saying he, sucked out. He's literally space. saying like I'm about to die, and I just wanted to like see these last moments. I wanted to see the sun. I wanted yeah. to see. Well, and yeah. he's like, I want to know how you feel. Yeah. Because now he fe- he understands feelings, I guess, in some kind of way. Well, because he's. He, he's it's like empathy. Got, well, because yeah. he's gotten all of his memories. Yeah. So he but understands his memories. But they won't take. And now he's done. Did we actually. We didn't even talk about that. And I know we're, our time is pretty much up. But yeah, at some point to find uh, yeah. John, Mr. Hand imprints himself with the actual John Murdoch intended memory the yeah. serial killer so he can try and track him down yeah yeah it's trying to understand like the whole point is like you can try to create this like false narrative and make some a murderer but he's still gonna have like feelings yeah you know and like, he d- like looper yeah like he doesn't like sure he realizes that he doesn't remember his wife that they've just met like that day or whatever but he's also completely alone in a world and she's someone that's actually like reaching out and being like, I care about you. And that's fucking addicting to humans. And that's what it's all about. Mm. You know, it does have a happy ending that he, uh, even, you know, he does walk off into the sunset with her and or into the sunset, sun, sunrise, sunrise at Shell Beach. And he knows who he is at the end of the movie. He the the last is. line is, uh, she asked him what his name is. And he's John Murdoch. So John he's Murdoch. assumed that, you know, OK, I am John Murdoch. This I know who that is. Yeah. Happy Which is, There you go. There's the other title. I am John Murdoch. I am John Murdoch. <laughs> Alternate titles apparently tossed around by New Line Cinema was Dark World. Mm. That's worse. Dark yeah. Empire. Mm. Mm. I sense it's about the, the same. It's a parallel move. Yeah. According to Wikipedia, Mad City was coming out around the same time, and they're like, well, oh, we don't yeah. want to compete with that. We don't want people to be confused between the Mad City and the Dark City. Mm. They how dark, about how dark was Mad City, and how mad was Dark City? Mad City wasn't that that one with didn't John Travolta take somebody hostage? Well, what? <laughs> sounds familiar. I think so. Yeah, yeah that yeah. sounds familiar. Mad City. You want to know the taglines for this? Yes. They built the city to see what makes us tick. Last night, one of us went off. They built this city. Yeah. I, I think that's good. No, forget the sun. Forget time. Forget your memories. Mm. Mm. Darkness falls soon. Mm. Mm. A world where the night never ends, where man has no past and humanity has no future. Mm, it's better. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. We're getting closer. Yeah. You are not who you think you are. Nah. Yeah. I remember the trailer for this. That works if you know what the movie's yeah. about, but yeah. otherwise it doesn't. Yeah. At the time I remember seeing this trailer, it had like, because it, it was, you know, a, it had a visual look. Yes. And a pulse to the music that they used. I think it was maybe Gary Newman or something like that, mm-hmm. but it was. It was striking, and I'm like, I'm seeing that movie. Yeah. And uh, apparently, that didn't work on anybody else. No. <laughs> Any guesses on the budget? Well, I know what it, it is. looks expensive. It, yeah, it's got to be like 40. 27. Wow. 1998. How that's far ex- we've that's come? That's a lot of. <laughs> how much do you think it made? Like, like worldwide? Like four. 10. Worldwide. Four? 10? Uh, yeah, like 10. Worldwide, I'm going to say 45. You know how much? 27. 27. 27. <laughs> <laughs> it made its money back. <laughs> Bravo. 
Ouch. Well, now it is considered a cult science fiction classic. It has, uh, right. So, it yeah. has yeah, gathered a following. Yeah. All sure. right. Well, we should probably tell you whether or not you should watch it now that we've totally spoiled it. But now you can go see what we're talking about uh, by or, or maybe not. We're going to find out. First of all, I'm going to keep you in suspense just a little while longer. Mm. Because first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He also has no memories. Igor, I feel like, is one of the strangers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, that's why he's got the hat on. But are we the hive? No, I still think he's experimenting with us. Yeah, he's experimenting. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, we are the experiment. Oh. He's seeing how we act I know. on a weekly yeah. basis. Yeah. But he's not but he's here like, right he's now. He's like really bad at experimenting. He's yeah. like, can he give us some better memories, please? He forgot yeah. the experiment was going on at a certain point some years ago. He's like, what the fuck do I do with them now? Yeah. <laughs> if you do open that door, there is space back there. <laughs> that makes sense. You don't know that there isn't. Okay, so yeah, we should probably let people know how they can get a hold of us and participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, freaks, I hate to tell you this, but we had oh, an no. uh, accelerated recording schedule uh, this week, so we don't have any mail on Dark City. However, we will mm. next week. We will next week. So yeah. Tune in then. Yeah. Um, but about last week's movie, we watched Death Race 2000. <laughs> yeah, we sure did. Yeah. <laughs> and Pat Hetfield writes in and says, I especially enjoyed the performance of Sylvester Stallone as Machine Gun Joe Viterbo. He says, good. did I get that last name wrong? It doesn't matter. A lot of people, including Roger Corman himself, as anybody who saw the brief interview with him on the movie's videotape release knows, also gets it wrong. <laughs> I love that. It's the turbo. <laughs> and he says, I would like to see a movie where he's the main character. Sure. Why not? Death Race Very 2030. <laughs> All right. uh, Joey Blythe said, uh, when I was in a car as a kid, my mom would sometimes say, how many points? Oh, my God. <laughs> so now that I'm older, I'm like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom's pretty cool. We used to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If we saw someone, we'd be like, oh, 10 points. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you know that's how that movie started. Of yeah, course. Oh, absolutely. Said, yeah. Yeah. This old game we used to play where we assign <laughs> points to people if you're going to run them over and kill them. A movie. There you go. Just, just child games. You know? yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, those children's games. And a week before that, we watched a movie called Monster Dog. Uh, uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, so you all talked a little bit about Cruel Jaws on that episode. Any chance that we'll see that? Being done on the Saturday Night Freak Show? Yes. And he also says Monster Dog is better than anything in an American werewolf in Paris. And I can't believe you haven't done that one yet. And then he oh, says, it's been oh, on yeah. my list. It's been on my list for Man, a while, I too. I watched the trailer for that. I'm like, oof, no. It's I can't. Rough. It, it looks it's rough. rough. I've, yeah, I saw it once in the theater and never went it back. It looks rough. That's why it's hard for me to bring it, because I'm like, I don't know if I want to see Yeah, right. exactly. Because yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, even like it feels, it feels like it fits right in my wheelhouse. Like, oh, there was a hugely popular movie and they made a sequel about it. Hell yeah. Then you I look at that cast, too. Ooh. It is. Isn't it is, Thomas yeah. ever Scott in that? It is yeah. hard to get yeah. through. Yeah. I peed next yeah. to him once. Yeah? How was that? How was that experience? <laughs> you peed next to him? Yeah. We were in a bathroom. Well, I... <laughs> but yeah. Did you play it cool? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I nodded as we were washing and leaving. I mean, what, what was that movie he was in before? You didn't go, oh my God, you're the guy from American Werewolf in Paris. <laughs> Paris yeah. I just look at him and go, holy shit. I'm kind of surprised he doesn't do the horror conventions, honestly. that thing you do? That, that's what I was thinking. Dead Man yeah. Yeah. I was like, that Tom Hanks yeah, movie, what was stuff. it? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. I like him. And, mm -hmm. and Grace Under Fire. Yeah. He's in that too. Yeah, Grace Under Fire, holy shit. <laughs> that's random, I know, but... Mm -hmm. Well, She's tra um, Travis also says, uh, okay, Colin is a big Alice Cooper fan. What are your top five songs of his? Mm, let's rewind to seven years ago where Colin sang them all down here. I know, but those are only the ones available on Rock Band. But Very I don't thrilled. know. I, there's so many that I like, so I'm going to go. He's back, the man behind the mask, because that's the one I think that, uh, you know, introduced me really to Alice Cooper. School's out, right? Of course, yeah. Uh, I like Welcome to My Nightmare, but that might be tied with uh, The Ballad of Dwight Fry, which is also kind of creepy. Um, and what am I at now? Four? 
Let's go with poison. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Poison's good. There you go. Uh, Adam Kaler says that it was Alice Cooper's dubbed voice that threw him off during mm. Monster Dog. It's yeah. hard to adjust to. Yeah. That's weird. And uh, we were saying, um, we posted a photo, and I think we asked on the show, it's like, is it weird seeing Alice Cooper uh, kind of puttering around the house uh, as a normal dude? And uh, Grant Paris says, well, even demons need a home life. True, <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> and Action Dude writes in. What up, Action Dude? And he says, oh boy, this sounds rough. Oops, I meant rough. <laughs> nah. I don't think we can get there. He says, if a werewolf rolls over and wants to have his or her belly rubbed, can it truly be labeled a monster dog? <laughs> Who's a good monster puppy? You are. There you go. I'm adding <laughs> myself. All right. uh, well, thank you all. Yes, thank you. Every one of you. Yes, for thank you all for getting, for getting Colin to do that. I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, now we're going to go around. Okay, what did you think? Jump right in. Of tonight's movie, Dark City. Uh, I kind of don't really know how I feel about it yet because I feel like I haven't fully absorbed the movie yet. Um, right, But I see you. its influence for the next, you know, till today, basically, yeah. you okay. know. Um, And I think I, I do like to root for an underdog. And I think that this is a situation where the Matrix got all the credit for what this movie actually did. Um, And I always... It really feels like it. Yeah, yeah. And I really appreciate, like... This guy was like, I have, I keep having this weird dream, and he gets to make like a multi million dollar right. movie out of a weird reoccurring dream. He has that's awesome. Yeah. That's I that's the job. That's the dream. That's the job I want. Like yeah. literally the dream. Yes. Like so, I can't be mad at that. I. It's a lot to take in, yeah. but I, I, I mean, I like a movie that challenges me, and it sm seems to be smarter than I am. So I feel like I have to <laughs> recommend it. So yeah, I think you should definitely check it out. But I mean, if you've already listened to this point, and you haven't seen it. It's. I don't, I don't know what your experience is going to be. So go in as blind as possible, I would say. But yeah, I recommend it. Uh, Colin, what do you think? Um, it, it, the thing I guess I got out of tonight's viewing of it was the movie still impresses me. Mm -hmm. Like, and I've seen it multiple times now over the course of my life. Um, it impressed me when I first saw it in the theater. I mean, I don't know if I was like, you know, it's the greatest movie of the year. <laughs> Um, but now, you know, as time has kind of separated you from it, you look back on the milestones of, uh, great science fiction movies and you know, it's like, this is, uh, I think a, a sizable moment, you know, in sci-fi. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a stone cold science fiction classic. Um, and I have seen since I saw this, I've seen a lot of the like old, you know, Fritz Lang metropolis, sure, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. Right. Um, which I guess gives you that kind of extra appreciate. Man, you go back and watch those movies. Yeah. They have huge budgets. Like you they do. don't they hold think, up. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know Metropolis yeah. plays like you at the mm -hmm. three hour version right. made more sense than the like hour oh, yeah. and a half one that mm -hmm. I saw before. It's because it was still a relatively new concept, so people are throwing money at movies. Right. Oh god. Yeah. They're they're gigantic. Yeah. Huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um you should go back and watch Metropolis if I've you haven't seen, seen it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I remember it being big. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and also uh, film noir is a, yes. a thing I like. The the creepy strangers, uh, you know, the the characters and the murder mystery. I mean, this is actually probably more my jam than The Matrix is. I mean, mm -hmm. not to take away from any of the accomplishments of that movie, um, but I guess when, if you saw this first, which I did, it did kind of feel like, okay, well this was in the zeitgeist and the matrix was like, okay, you know, it's the action movie version. Yeah. Uh, but it's going after a lot of the same concepts of, uh, uh, you know, everything around you isn't real and who are you really, you know, and, uh, at the end of it through human, um, adaptability, becomes a superhero that <laughs> beats the evil alien or artificial intelligence or whatever. Oh, yeah, he's but, basically Black Bolt at the end of this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, I guess when we were starting, it's like David Goyer, a comic book. It's, oh, yeah, it's yeah, got yeah, a comic right. book, uh, right, you know, true, very true. Uh, sheen to it. So yeah. I would definitely uh, 100% you have to see Dark City. It's a classic of the 1990s and a classic of science fiction. Um, Sean, what do you think? Uh, I was, you know what I was very impressed by in this movie? Hmm. I was actually very impressed by the CGI. I was yeah. surprised. It all felt really 
it all really worked within the movie. It felt part of the movie, which doesn't always happen. Especially. It felt like it was used when it was necessary. Yes, and yeah. it all like it all fit the design of it and everything. Yeah. It also it all fit within this. It didn't take me out of it. I think it still holds up to me. It still looks good. Whatever what it represents in the movie, mm -hmm. I was very surprised like that because it's easy to go back to this time and look at the CGI and just be like, oh god, it makes it stick out mm -hmm. like a sore thumb. But no. Uh, the, and the production design on this movie, like when the machine starts turning and the building is like underground, but then twisting up and everything like this is a hell of a movie. And yeah. and that's not even getting to like the story that I mean, it, it takes you places. You're asking the questions that we've been asking tonight about, I mean, you know, uh, humanity. And like you said, who, who are we? What are we? Uh, can we be changed by certain things? It mm -hmm. is. It it really is a fascinating movie in many many aspects. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I th I mean I recommend it. I uh, how long was this movie? It didn't feel like whatever uh, was an it? hour and forty minutes. That's pretty good. All right, this it's got a pretty good runtime. Yeah, this is a this is a good movie. William Hurt's doing good. Mm -hmm. um, Kiefer Sutherland is his is his ratty best in this. He's just he's like he's like uh, feels like Wormtail from like Harry Potter. <laughs> Uh, Tim Spaulding, yeah, he has like uh, his performance. He's he's got like an asthmatic uh, delivery on everything, yeah. and it's yeah. like, and he's got like one eye that's half closed. And he's in like this German uh, doctor yes, uniform, yeah. Yeah. and it's like, have I seen Kiefer Sutherland do? This? You know, have you ever seen Freeway? Yes. Okay. Freeway's good. <laughs> I was like, what's Kiefer Sutherland's most like actorly? You know, when he's not playing Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah, that one. That I saw that movie probably way too young. Yeah, <laughs> that one always messed me up. But yeah, this is yeah, this is a good movie. I'm surprised. Um, it is fun to watch it now and see like its influence going down the line, um, especially immediately coming up with the Matrix and everything. But yeah, um, yeah, it's a it's a good movie. Um, I recommend it. Dark City. That's, that's good. It's a lot of good elements. Again, the noir stuff is cool. I'd like to see this in black and white at some point. To tell you the truth, if it's if it wouldn't be too dark if it went that route. But yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is a good movie. I like it. Uh, Holly, hmm. take us home. Yeah. Um, Dark City. So, yeah, I, I really like what's going on in this movie. There's so many amazing elements. Um, I, I hate that it got lost in, in the nineties. Like it, it, it's such a impactful movie and you can, you, you can clearly see like all these influences, you know, German cinema, you can even see like Kubrick and there's a lot of Ridley Scott. There's a lot of a lot of influences here, but then like we were saying, you see a lot of influences that clearly came from this movie. And it's just really cool to see that evolution of, of cinema happening. Um, and I like a lot of the, the details, like the, like the syringe that Kiefer Sutherland has, like they actually built a massive replica, like a yard long. So we could see like the up close details of that syringe. And it's like little stuff like that makes this movie really special. I oh, think. The sound it makes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those this moments were cooler. really cool. And yeah, the angles they do yeah. that. It's very good. And we didn't talk about it. One of like the creepiest things about this movie is the strangers doing the teeth chattering. Mm. Yeah. That is so weird to me. I don't know why it's so jarring, but it really is. But there's just yeah. a lot of little details like that. Because well, it all it, it reminds yeah. me of the chatterer from. Yeah. That's from true. That's true. It does make me think of the chatter. Whatnot, yes. Um, and also, there's a certain moment mm -hmm. like, um, uh, when's the last time any of you watched uh, Coneheads? I was thinking Coneheads! Yes! Were what you thinking that? Coneheads when they're all yes! gathered around yes! and they're all like talking to each other? Like, yes! Oh, uh, yeah. Coneheads all the way. Too. I'm just and like, I was, ooh! I was like, I don't know if anyone's going to follow that if I say it right now. But no! I, I figured I was you would like, this feels like Coneheads. <laughs> which feels the like they watched this. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. This is this is exactly like Coneheads. Um... Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I think it's, I think it's really special. I think the, you know, like we talked about the, like the cuts, or it's like every two seconds, so there's a new, there's a new shot, um, and I think that could be really messy and really annoying. I think it's very well done in this. I think it moves the story along in in a appropriate way. Um, I I agree. I don't think this movie feels long. I think it's there's just so much going on to take in. Um, yeah, I really liked it. It's it's a good one. I I think you, I personally think you should watch the director's cut. Um, I think there's way too much given up front in the theatrical with the voiceover. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 a good one. I like this one, and yeah, I, I think, I think we nitpick a lot during our discussion, but it's you know that's what that's what we do. Yes. You know, we pick it apart. 
And but, if you want to know anything more about this movie, there's five commentaries on this disc. Yes. Is there? Five. <laughs> yes. Pro- oh, but it's also got like a production designer commentary as well. On yeah. So anything you would want to know. Yeah. yeah. Who did a hell of a job. Um, but yeah, one one thing, and we talked about that um, the director, this was based on like his reoccurring dream, but the moving city parts, that was influenced by watching the crew move the sets around on the crow. Uh, he was ooh. he was inspired to do the moving city, mm-hmm. which nice. I thought was really cool. So yeah, I just I really like this movie. I think it comes from a cool place and it's it's very well done. Um yeah, I definitely recommend it. Yeah, and you, so you've seen both versions yes. now and so have I. So yeah, I think the director's cut I mean cuz he had, you know, whatever 20 years to think about it and so it's just it yeah. feels like there's more clarity to some of the characters it you know there's like little extra bits with them dialogue exchanges and stuff like that that you know obviously director's cut this is what the director intended and i agree with them it just (laughs) it's better yeah (laughs) i don't always agree with that i think sometimes directors are are just like up their own ass and just making it longer make it longer but no i think for this it works um so i can see why he wanted to put this cut out 10 years after Makes sense to me. That's right. We still haven't seen the black and white Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, oh, yeah. Character's <laughs> cut. I think that is just black and white. I think it's the same cut, but still. It is. You know, like, yeah. you get, yeah. 20 odd years later, you get a chance to revisit your movie. You know. <laughs> Sometimes, George Lucas, it's not a good thing. <laughs> well, I guess that means Unless that, he made black and white Star Wars. Yeah, there you go. That's the next thing. Star yeah. Wars doesn't the, need to be black and white. The That's Mandalorian not, would look I, I really agree. cool in black and white. <laughs> that would That's true. Bad, yeah. The Mandalorian would look awesome in mm-hmm. black and white. Yeah, mm-hmm. changed your mind real quick, didn't you? I did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was well, thinking like original Star Wars. I'm well, like, yeah, no, yeah, that's what I think. That's what I was. That's what I was saying. Yeah, I was like, no, you need color, but Mandalorian, that'd be yeah. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, based on our rules, that means because all four of us recommended it, you're contractually obligated to watch Dark City. I think that's a good thing, actually. Yeah, it's, I think, uh, yeah, I think, think all the doors lock in one. people's houses and they can't get out. Yeah, watch the movie. Watch it. All right. Can we somehow pull that off in our minds when we reconstruct the new world? Yeah, we'll have to add that. Little <laughs> oh yeah, uh, uh, it just occurred to me. Uh, Darius Kanji was the cinematographer, mm. so he had done seven. Yes, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. There's yes. a lot of uh, a lot of greens and just, uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. That that opening bathtub scene, the bathroom scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And you're saying influences like Alex Proyas is ripping himself off. There's that uh, introductory scene where you go through the uh, window, the circular window, mm-hmm. and you go through the model city. Yeah. And through yeah. The window, I'm like, oh, oh, the crow. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, sorry, we're, we're prattling on way too long. Good. Uh, yeah. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What shall we watch next week? We're going to watch Berserker from 1987. Ooh, good. <laughs> Never seen this, so we'll see. No, people say it's nuts. Yep. That's what I hear. That's right. We talked about this on the show before. I we think have. so. All right. Yeah. Berserker yep. next week on the Saturday Night Free Show. Uh, what year? In 1987. 1987. There you go. In yeah. case there's other titles out there with the same name. Berserker with an S. No oh, Z. okay. S. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh yeah, okay. There's yeah. one other movie out there called Berserker. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, that's what your homework assignment is. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.